Hey guys, and welcome to this video on the C programming language. So I was looking at a problem in a book called Cracking the Coding Interview, and I'll have a link to that book in the description below. And what we want to do for this program, what the problem was, was it wanted us to write a program to count the number of twos that appear in all numbers between 0 and n inclusive. So that means we want to include 0 and include n. So an example of this, let's say we have an input where our value n equals 25. Then we want our output to produce the number 9. And the reason for this, I'll put reasoning here, is because the values from 0 to 25 that have a 2 in it are 2, 12, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Okay? Now you may say, well, wait, this is only eight values, right? We have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values. But this, th what we're doing, we're counting all the twos. So this number 22 counts for two twos. So I'm going to put a little note here. Note that 22 counts for two twos. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our main function. Perfect. And we know for the program, we're going to need to include an integer n variable. So I'm going to declare it there and set a value to it. We're going to set 25. Uh, we're going to initialize it to 25 for right now. And we're going to need another variable to loop through all the numbers from 0 to 25. So I'm going to create another integer variable called i. And then we're going to create a for loop. So for i equals 0, and we want this to run while i is less than or equal to n because we want it to be inclusive. So we want to include that value n. And then we're going to increment i by 1 each time to go through every single um, number from 0 to n. So this will go through every number from 0 to 25. That's what i will be. All right. And we can see this if you want to. I can just do a print statement here, uh, percent %d i, and then maybe put a space here and a semicolon. And let's just give this a run. All right, so you can see we have all the values from 0 to 25. All right. So I'm going to comment this out for now. And next up, let's go ahead and try to create our function. So... Um, well, we're going to need we're going to need something to count it, right? So let's create a variable called count. It's going to be a global variable, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. So this is going to keep a count of how many twos we have, and this is going to basically be the output that we print. So it's going to be the value nine for this uh, example of where n equals twenty-five. All right. Now let's go ahead and create our function. I'm going to make it void. Because uh, we're going to use that count variable there. So we don't need to return anything. We're going to use the count variable inside of the function. And I'm going to call the function count twos. And it's going to take in an integer variable. Um, we'll call it uh, x. All right. And this right here will count all the twos for us. So I'm just going to copy this here. And we're going to actually work with it here. All right, so uh, this is how the algorithm is going to work. We're going to do some recursion. So if x is less than or equal to 0, then we can just exit out of this function. And we can do that by saying return. And we don't have to return a number or anything like that because this is void. So we can just put return. All right, but now if it's not if x is not less than or equal to 0, I'm only accounting for negative values. Uh, probably don't need to, but just in case. So if it's not less than or equal to 0, then it's some other number. And we need to check to see if that number is 2 or not. So what we can do to check to see if that number, well, contains 2, um, 
we can use what's called a modulus operator. So we can say if x mod 10 is 2, so anything modded by 10 is only going to give us values from 0 to 9, right? So let's say we had 122, uh, uh, let's say x equal 122, so we have 122 modded by 10, then we only get a remainder of 2. Uh, another example would be uh, maybe we have 542. So 542 mod 10 is also equal to just 2. All right. So so we found a 2 in there, uh, the very last number. And we're going to worry about uh, if they have two 2's in there in, in the next step. So for now, what we're going to do is we found a 2 in the remainder and we're going to increment our count by one. So we're just going to do count plus plus. So now we've incremented our count by one. Okay, so now we need to check the next number. All right, so the next number, um, well, if we had a, from the, from another example, if we had 122, this right here will of course give us a remainder of two. So we have our count plus plus, but still we have another two there. So to get that other two, we can recursively go back into our function. So I'm going to just say count twos and it give me x divided by 10. All right. So let's let's take a look at this again. And it's going to put a little example here. Um, so x is going to equal 122. Uh, we'll put that in the, the top the top here just for this quick example to show you how this is actually working. It's going to check to see if x is less than or equal to 0, and it's not because it's 122. So then we're going to go here to this if statement, and it's going to say if x modded by 10 equals equals 2, then we're going to do count plus plus. So let's do that arithmetic here. So we get 122 modded by 10. So this gives us a remainder of 2. So our count um, uh, it adds 1. So our count equals count plus 1. Okay. All right. And so now we want to go back into our function called count twos. But instead of inputting x by itself, we're going to put in x divided by 10. So um, now in our function, we're going to get x divided by 10. So let's do that arithmetic as well. So we have 122 divided by 10. And this equals 12.2. Uh, but because we are using the C programming language, it's going to round down. So this equals 12 in C. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing again. It's going to check to see if x is less than or equal to 0. And it's not. So it's going to go to this statement here. And it's going to do x modded by 10. So let's do that arithmetic. So we get 12 mod 10. And this gives us a remainder of 2. All right. And then we're going to go right back into the function. We're going to do 12 divided by 10. So we get 12 divided by 10. This is going to equal 1.2. But of course, because we're using C, it's going to round down to just 1. And um, then we're going to go here. We're going to say if x is less than or equal to 0 return. But it's not. It's 1. So we're going to check to see if 1 mod at 10 equals 2. And it doesn't. So, But we're, we're going to put that arithmetic here. 1 mod 2. Oops. One mod two, um, and that right there does not equal two. Um, it equals, I believe, one equals one. So we don't do a count plus plus there. And I should have uh, put in this other step um, up here. I should have said that count equals count plus one again. So now we've added another um, step to count. All right, so uh, sorry for skipping that step, but that's um, what we need to do as well. Now we're going to go back. We're going to do 1 divided by 10. So now we get 1 divided by 10. This equals uh, 0.1, but because C program uh, language um, rounds down, 
which is just going to be 0. And then, of course, when we get to 0, we just return out of this. So that's what we're going to do for each value as we go through the loop here. All right. So now what we can do is we can take this function, copy it, and paste it right here. But instead of the value x, we're going to put in our value i, because i is going to keep changing from 0 to n. All right. And because our count's a global variable, um, we don't have to worry about returning it or anything like that. Okay, so now let's just print our solution. So we're going to print um, count equals percent %d, maybe a new line, and then we'll just put the count. All right, so let me give this a run. And we get exactly what we expected for the output, 9. Um, let's give it another run. Instead of 25, let's just try 22. So for 22, we're expecting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values. And we're not expecting uh, 23, 24, 25. So just 6 values here. And let's give this a run. And let's see. So we get count equals 6 here. So um, that's basically it, guys. Thank you. And again, you can get the book in the description below. I'll be sure to put a link there for you guys. It's a really good book to practice coding. And don't forget to leave likes, comments, questions. I keep putting up some more videos like this, uh, you know, to kind of get you thinking on how to program and make you a little bit better. And right now, I'm really enjoying this book. So anyways guys thanks for watching and oh don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys all in the next video